Hello everyone, Mark here, Mark's Max Muscle, and the topic of this video is World's Strongest Men and Bodybuilding. This is your current World's Strongest Man, Tom Stoltman, and as you can plainly see, he's got a big old beer belly. In fact, most of these World's Strongest Men have big old beer bellies. To be honest with you, when Stoltman began his career, he was pretty muscled up. He looked like a somewhat of a bodybuilder. He had to fatten himself up to get better. So that begs the question, can an actual bodybuilder, uh, a true muscle man, a muscle man, win the world's strongest man? Well, that is the question of the day. We're going to be going through the entire history of the world's strongest man competition. And I'm going to handpick... In my opinion, that is, the very best bodybuilders of the group and see where they placed things of that nature. And would you believe, in 1977, the very first ever World's Strongest Man, there was a Mr. Olympia champion. A Mr. Olympia champion. That's the best of the best competing at this event. It was Franco Colombo, and alongside him was another bodybuilder. Lou Ferrigno, who actually placed second at the Mr. Olympia event and third. So these were two top of the line bodybuilders. I mean, this is them and their their bodybuilding outfits. And as you can plainly see, but credential wise, I mean, you're not going to get any more accomplished bodybuilders than these two dudes in terms of world's strongest man competitors. Now, where did they place? Where can a bodybuilder place at the world's strongest man? Lou Ferrigno got fourth. Fourth. There was a lot of weightlifters, I believe at least one Olympic weightlifter, things of that nature, that Lou defeated in the world's strongest man competition. And what about Franco? Actually, Franco, who took fifth place, was a more impressive case, if you ask me. Lou was near 300 pounds, guys, like six foot four. Franco was, in my estimation, well under 200 pounds. And he placed fifth out of eight characters. And he actually he broke his leg at the last competition. So he, he lost points. He probably even would have beat Lou if not for that. But having said that, the most accomplished bodybuilder of all time ever to compete world's strongest man not a bad placing go to the 1979 uh world's strongest man competition and dave johns not too much footage of this guy you can't really see his physique he competed and as you can see here he was a very accomplished bodybuilder so worth to mention dave johns of course did not place very well at the world's strongest man this gentleman, however, did Bill Kazmaier, and he also made his debut at the 1979 World's Strongest Man. He got third at that particular event, went on to win three titles, multiple titles, and yeah, a little bit of a midsection there when you're, when you're talking in terms of bodybuilding physiques, but man, look at the traps. Look at the back on this guy. I mean, we're talking Olympia-level traps. From behind so Bill Kazmaier wasn't ripped like a bodybuilder but definitely had the muscle attachments things of that nature 1980 you guys know who this is it's a former professional wrestler superstar Billy Graham and I thought I would mention him out of respect I mean at one time he was a specimen look at that look at that did not place all that well at the world's strongest man 1982, there was another professional wrestler. This is Tom McGee. He placed second, actually, at the World's Strongest Man 1982. And he didn't show his physique all that much. But as you can see here, he was a true muscle man. Absolutely worth to mention. Of course, the following year, Jean-Paul Sigmerson, he overshadowed Tom McGee as well as many others in the physique department. I mean, this guy was ripped. And much like Tom McGee, placing second 
in his World Strongest Man debut, put everybody on notice that it wasn't just the big beer-bellied 300-pound men you could be ripped and still do good in this competition. In fact, Jean-Paul Sigmerson went on to win four World Strongest Man titles, which was a record at the time, defeating Bill Kazmaier, and what a little shootout here. Bill had quite a physique. Not the ab separation, and we know in bodybuilding that means a great deal as far as body fat percentage, things of that nature. But yes, Bill definitely standing, holding his own against the uh, the Icelander, the muscle man himself, Jean-Paul Sigmerson, who actually competed in bodybuilding. I guess he won the the Iceland Championships, 1988. Competed a few years before that as well, but not a bad physique. And when you compare him with other world's strongest men competitors of his time, he had the best physique out of the group. Not only that, but he was winning the most competitions as well. So yes, a bodybuilder can be the strongest man in the world and still look good while doing it. But you know what? There was an even better physique than Jean Paul's. This is Manfred Hoberl, and he made his World's Strongest Man debut in 1991. He placed eighth, but in 1993, he emerged, and he actually placed fourth, and he clearly had the best physique out of the bunch. And I remember watching this with my old man back when I was just probably 12 years old, and I was so impressed by these arms. But I, I probably started curling a couple of cans of beans right then and there. A little pump on my bicep. Here's Manfred in a side-by-side -side comparison with none other than Magnus for Magnuson. And you, you can clearly see Manfred is the more muscular man of the two. Of course, Magnus for Magnuson, one of the best strong men of all time. So Manfred did lose, but he placed second in 1994 unbelievable those biceps they look like they were gonna pop right out of the arms and that that might be another story for another type of video you see I always looked up to this guy like I said one of the first inspirations was Manfred to to little Mark's max muscle back in 1992 three whenever it was 91 but there is definitely some clay he slapped on some clay there's definitely some some aftermarket work gone into those arms, taking nothing away from the actual strength and the inspiration that Manfred Hoberl did deliver across the world. Now, of course, I cannot mention Manfred Hoberl without mentioning good old Gary Taylor, guy who generally would place ahead of Manfred Hoberl at the World's Strongest Man competition, actually taking the title in 1993. Did good old Gary Taylor. He looks like a Welshman. Doesn't he look like a Welshman? I think he is a Welshman. Now, he didn't have the best physique for a World's Strongest Man competitor. But you know what? He used to compete in bodybuilding. Look at that, guys. And it... Hey. Hey. Is that Dorian Yates? Did, did Gary Taylor, the Welshman, compete against Dorian Yates? I think he did. I think he did. Now, as we get into the later 90s, it was huskier physiques, like that of Magnus Samuelson, one of my favorite World's Strongest Man competitors. And he probably did have the best physique of the bunch back in the day. He won the competition in 1998. Years later, he looked more and more like a bodybuilder. Like he got less body fat, things of that nature. But he was never as good in the competition. So I guess that just goes to show you. 1997, there was a, a pretty decent muscle man. This is Yoko Ohola. And he competed at about this body fat percentage. So he was, like I said, a true muscle man. And he won the competition in 1997. He went on to win another one in 1999. So there, there you go again, guys. Another exception. To the rule, you don't have to be a big beer-bellied guy to win this competition. And the next gentleman on this video is a perfect example of that. Have a look, if you will, at Morios Pudzinowski, the Polish 
powerhouse. Wow. And he competed looking like this, guys. He was ripped. Abs were in. He had muscles everywhere. Look at the legs on this guy. So this dude here, Morios Pujanovsky, he was a true bodybuilder for sure. Not only that, but he is the greatest world's strongest man champion in the history of the sport. He took five world's strongest man titles, which defeated the current record of four at that time. And the record of five still stands. Nobody, nobody has defeated thus far Morios Pujanovsky. So when you ask the question, what does a world's strongest man have to be built like? Most people say, you know, great big fat stomachs and huge muscles everywhere. But the funny thing is, the guy who won the most titles is ripped like a bodybuilder. So Morios Pujanovsky does not get the credit that he deserves. He was like a superman. You see, not only was he winning the, the bodybuilding competition, if there was one, between all the World's Strongest Man competitors. He was also winning the event. He was the strongest, too. And not only that, we're also going to toss in, he was an MMA fighter, a pretty decent one. So you'd have beat them all up, too, if you think about it. Well, maybe. Well, maybe. You don't know. You don't know, but probably. So the guy was a true Superman, or should I say, Hercules. Thought I'd seen that picture somewhere before. Now, other than Pujanovsky, you really didn't see a whole lot of bodybuilder-type physiques, aside from the odd guy that would pop up from time to time, like Derek Poundstone, actually placing second to Morios Pujanovsky in 2008. So that was a muscular top two, and that was his best placing. The funny thing is, look at Derek Poundstone off-season, quote-unquote off-season. He would get ripped and then put on the beef for competition. And you know what? A lot of them did that. Have a look at big Zadruna Savikas or Zadruna Zavikas. Big Z. Big Z. I'm sure you guys that follow the sport are familiar with this guy. He would get ripped in the offseason, the opposite of a bodybuilder. Isn't that funny? Here's another pretty famous world's strongest man competitor. And this is after his strongman career, I believe. Very leaned out. This is Half Half Thor Bjornsson. A true muscle man, for sure. And Eddie Hall. Look at this guy. Eddie Hall. You, you can't make a bodybuilding slash world's strongest man video without mentioning Eddie Hall. He, I believe he tried to kickstart a bodybuilding career, but I don't know. I don't know. A, a strong man, he is. A bodybuilder, probably not going to happen. So at the end of the day, guys, Morios Pujanovsky will go down in history as probably having the best physique out of any world's strongest man competitor, you know, a top flight competitor. And anyway, I'm sure there was some prelim preliminary guys. We're not counting those. It was only the finals, counting the finals, only those guys. I think Morios probably the best physique out of anyone, the most ripped. And he won the most titles. So that is definitely a kudos to the game, the sport of bodybuilding, whatever you would call it. Morios Pujanovsky, true legend. Hit thumbs up on the video, guys, if you did, in fact, enjoy it. And if not, go ahead and give me the thumbs up anyway. You know, it all helps. Have a, have a great one, guys.